Now what we're going to be showing you in the next two examples are patients with myasthenia gravis, predominantly with ocular myasthenia, and we're going to take you through the tense line test. Well, here's the baseline exam. There's bilateral ptosis, and you'll see that there's bilateral duction deficits as well. The patient is apparently fixating with the right eye, and there's a left hypertropia, but the vertical ductions of that left eye are impaired as well. Now these examples are long, and they're basically on this tape to show you that sometimes you have to observe response to tensilon over prolonged periods of time, and if you're confused about whether or not there's a response, it's not a bad idea to get an objective observer in the room to see the patient before and after. Now what we do in the clinic are take still Polaroid photographs to document the patient's eyes before tensilon and then to document the eyes after Tensilon. And this can also help because when you're the examiner and performing the Tensilon test, you're spending a long time staring at the eyes. And if you're looking for subtle changes, it may be hard to tell. So I'm going to allow you to watch a little bit. This is after Tensilon, and I think that you can see there's a dramatic change. The ptosis is resolved somewhat. Actually, it's quite dramatic. And although the screen is split and the eyes aren't symmetric, I think you can see that the left hypertrophy is gone. And look at that, the left eye, the vertical ductions are very nice. This patient's able to get that eye up very well and can infraduct well as well. And this is a nice positive tensilon test. It's confirmed the diagnosis non-invasively. Now what we're going to see is that the effects of tensilon are fairly short-lived. As we keep, keep examining the patient's eyes, you'll notice that the lids start to fatigue again and tosis will develop. The patient will develop that hypertrophy again.